Okay, good evening. It's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up, we do one information is everybody's wearing their coats, but it's nice and warm in here. Again. Paul Benjamin. Hi. Paul Benjamin, I'm with the Greenfield Savings Bank. This is Denise Coyne, our executive vice president. He's here also, the COO. This is uh, informational. We are opening a new branch in town uh, where the RR branch uh, was next to the donut shop. That's one of the double up here. Okay. And um, what's the address? It's 140. 140. Russell Street. Yeah. Russell Street. Shipment owns the building. So what we are proposing is um, there's an existing sign. Actually, if you look at the second sheet, you'll see the existing sign is low to the ground and also has a solid base. And we believe that it also affects uh, traffic when they when they come around the, from the drive up area. Their their view is blocked somewhat. So we would like to raise the sign up to about 12 feet at the top and reshape uh, and then use posts instead so that it's clear through it so people have a full view of the traffic uh, on the site. And then the next sign is basically a replacement space where our heart had a sign on the end of the gable there. The one after that is just by the door. There was an existing sign there that has been taken down, of course, and then a sign with the hours of the branches. The one after that is an existing sign, which we're just going to read. Uh, label for directional. The one that has the call out is a new sign. That that's new, but it's you know standard directional size, and um, would just direct people to turn there so they don't go straight because these properties all kind of interlink as you know. Um, and then the others are just directional signs in the drive up area. Now the last one in the book is a two by three entrance sign. I have not drawn placements of those because we have to, uh, we're waiting for if the entrance to the building on Route 9, the, the two driveways with the island in the middle, apparently are going to be redone by Mass Highway. So we didn't want to, we wanted to wait and see what they're doing before we attempted to place anything there. But those would just be directional signs at the driveway entrance and we'd like to do the same thing on the curb cut on uh, Middle Street. Now, Dunkin' Donuts already has a sign there, so we were going to meet with uh, Ray and make sure that you know he's okay with the placement there. He's given us an okay, but we just need to cite it on that side. Yeah, was the previous uh, bank in there? It was called Arha. It was a federal credit union. Federal? Arha. It was A-A-R-H-A. Yeah. That's like Arha. It was a I believe it was a combination. It was TD. Yeah, it was TD before that. Then it was Shawmet, and then going back to the 70s, it was First National of Yeah. Our left uh, mid-February. Yeah, but that that credit union was a combination of all of the years of some other credit unions that kind of mm -hmm. joined, I guess, each other somehow. Yeah. Yes. There must be a lot of money in hand because we got a lot of things. <laughs> the, uh, the you tell the us. Bank, the, 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 uh, time time temperature. It's going to be time and temperature. Time and temperature. That's all it's going to be. Yep. And uh, that's uh, I I did bring it into the building inspector. He's seen all these and just wanted me to come in for okay. some directional ones are going to be. These are not going to be illuminated. No, none of. In fact, none of the signs will be internally illuminated. The I, I didn't because I haven't chosen a, um, a lighting system. There is ground lighting there, but I would like to actually have the lighting come down from on top so we don't have to deal with the snow hitting the lights and possible short shorting out. Uh, the light on the gable is not going to be illuminated. Um, and the uh, the directional signs we typically use a reflective material on so that when cars come around the corner the signs kind of self-illuminate. Okay, I got a question here. Sure. Don't go far. Yep, okay. This picture here yep. with the teller here. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the teller you're dealing with? No, yes, we have two tellers. We have a teller that works off of the drive up, the standard tube that you're probably used to at other banks. And we have an ATM that is a teller access ATM. This is a new technology we just introduced both in our Amherst downtown and our Northampton downtown branches. What happens is 24 7, it works just like an ATM. During bank hours and what we call extended teller hours, when you go to the screen, there's a picture of a teller and you put your finger on it or you can pick up a phone and, and just say, I'd like to talk to the teller. A teller from our call center up in Turner's Falls will pick up, and you can do any transaction that you would normally do with a teller at a teller window, 
at that machine. In fact, if you had a check from your your office or whatever, and you were going to cash it, and maybe it's fourteen dollars and eighty-five cents, you could insert that in the machine. It gets scanned. It comes up, and change and dollars will come out. What's this twenty-four-seven? Uh, the teller hours are limited. They're during business hours plus some extension in the morning and some extension in the evening. It allows us to offer more teller hours without the expense of keeping a branch open. Um, I don't do no business with Greenfield Bank, but I'm just going to write through and check out how the teller is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a really, it, it's, been, it's been very well received at the downtown branches. Um, and, and, you know, the, the great thing is, is that it allows people to use you know, get change back when they need it, and also we can extend the hours of the branch, and that's the main thing, and we're using our own people. You know, in, in some areas, these, these machines have been used to reduce, uh, you know, teller lines in terms of how many live tellers you have actually in a branch. We're using them, in fact, to employ more people and to extend the hours of the branch. So this works both ways? Yes. You can see the teller, and the teller, teller sees you? Teller sees you, yep. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's all tape recorded? Yes. And, and the same thing happens at a drive-up that has a tube. There's right. a camera in there. You're, you're able to see. Usually there's, there now they all have little screens. You can see the teller. They talk to you. Then they go to do the transaction. They might step out of the frame for a second. And then they'll come back and talk to you and send the money or your receipts or whatever you're doing. Okay. Just, for approval of just approval to say we're, you're okay with the designs and so on. And then I'll have to apply for permits with um, Tim, of course. Um, we already have a temporary sign, as you've noticed. We've had a permit for that, we just put a facing right over the old sign. So you're already open, right? No, yeah. no, no, it won't be open until May. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This all just came about very quickly. Our heart made a well, at least the decision locally was known almost immediately, you know, when it was made. <coughs> and uh, so, uh, the opening of the availability of the building sort of caught everybody, I think, by surprise, and we bank jumped right into it. Just, it's a nice location and it's already got, uh, we'll also have, um, in addition to teller line and the loan officer and so on there, um, if we're keeping the um, safe deposits, so we'll have safe deposit service there too. Paul. Yes. What you're showing us here, mm -hmm. is that what's going to be put up there and done? Yes. It is? Yes. Okay. What, what was Greenfield Savings Bank Incorporated? Uh, 1869. We're having our 150th year next year. Greg Franklin County Institution. Yep. My mother was from Waitley. Mm -hmm. yep. So, no exterior alterations. Nope. No change in use. Yep. I'll make a motion uh, to waive further site plan approval on a basis of no uh, exterior alterations and to approve the sign package. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes by favor. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice poster or something? What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, what do you carry that? I would advise you to just put it in the middle of the floor and use it to warm your hands. Right. You've got a green field statement in the bank Actually, he's joking. We do have one. I know. And, 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 and it doesn't even have the chain attached, so. Paul, if she don't, I'm taking my help. I'm sorry. I'm taking my help back. We'll come more They're prepared next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll bring it to one. <laughs> Dave Robinson. My name's Dave Robinson. Uh, I'm the principal owner of Winfield State. Over here, the apartment complex has the, uh, also the uh, uh, Greenleaf project, which is in there right next door, but the property that took my town line of school are. Uh, project. Uh, we, uh, I'm also the uh, architectural engineer. I designed the project 20 years ago. It was built 15, 20 years ago, and uh, it's been operating since uh, um, very nicely. Well, you notice that there's a couple of problems that surfaced immediately. One is there was too much parking, and consequently, uh, we kept track of it for a while. Uh, the project is divided into two sections. There's uh, uh, 80 units of um, senior housing and then 80 units of uh, family housing. Uh, the senior housing had one space per unit. Uh, but we found out very quickly that 20% of them went idle day and night, uh, weekends, weekdays. It didn't make any difference. Uh, which that, that's not too much of a problem. But on the other side, uh, there were two per 
Consequently, they don't even fill one per unit because the bus stops right at the place um, uh, on, the, on the loop. So uh, we built the parking lots and um, we had, uh, we just closed them. I mean, we don't even plow them. We haven't plowed them for years. There's some construction stuff there and so forth. So it prompted me to think that here is the site plan of that back section right here. Uh, with the Amherstown line here, and this is the family housing, the senior housing is over here. This is the, this is the area that uh, uh, just is kind of a waste. So uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you fellows and uh, see if it's possible that we could put another building over here of the senior housing. Uh, uh, it's been very successful for us and we think that with doing practically nothing here, we could slip that building in and uh, make this a much more useful area back here. So that uh, I have a, uh, uh, a sketch of what uh, I was thinking of. How many units would there be? Uh, there would be 68 additional. The bylaw is only going to allow you about 40. Well, this is this is how it would overlay here. Nothing, nothing of the parking, nothing anywhere else changes except we take off this end of the parking so that uh, this would fit on here, something like this. So the building here and a partial building here, and this parking would be then used for these buildings. Since these buildings are all uh, covered with uh, more than enough parking. We have uh, we have 20 almost uh, uh, 25 acres in this parcel, and uh, uh, then there's another six down there. Uh, there seems to be plenty of land, uh, but the developed part of it is only this section here for the family, and then this section goes down here for the two other buildings. And, and of course, you're going to make you're going to make a certain percentage affordable. We already have that in, in the project. We have, uh, I think it's 60 percent. Is is this under the old special permit, or are you applying this for a new one? Well, way. this would be a new one because the project was done and built 15, 20 years ago, and uh, with no changes or anything. So you're asking, and that was done under the comprehensive permit. Correct. That was done by the CDA. Correct. Yeah. You weren't directly yeah. involved. Yeah. So, but Ken we, suggested that I come over and talk with you tonight to see okay. what we, what we, we might be up against. The, the biggest thing is the way the senior housing bylaw is written, we can only give you a permit for about 40 units. Well, the, the, the single building is 40 units. Okay, we, 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 could, uh, we could accommodate that one under the existing okay. um, senior housing bylaw. Okay. Anything more than that, um, we don't, it would, it would need. We need a special permit need, or something? Or? That, that, the, the senior housing is a special permit, which probably need something from a variance from the CBA. I believe. I mean, we'd have to, we'd, I'm not even sure what it would require beyond that. We would have to do some serious thinking on that, but I know okay. we could do about 40 for this, I believe, is the number. 30 or 40. How First do we know that you're saying you're going to put it on this uh, senior? It doesn't change in six months. Is this senior over 55 out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yeah. The, 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 the senior is the 55 and over. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's what we applied for. And and, but we have, I mean, this is going to be under a 40B Zoning Board of Appeals. No, no, no. This no, 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 is under the Senior Housing Bylaw. By senior Housing Bylaw, we can give them about 40 units. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Right around there. Yeah. Well, 40 is exactly what that building is. Okay. And the building would be exactly as what we um, nail the nail board for board. And as part of that, I believe, I want to say, uh, the 10% has to be affordable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even yeah. though we have more than that in the project already. Yeah, because right. that's where the senior housing housing is written. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't this the whole project we're going to look at? No, 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 just that. No, this is, this is, this is already approved. This is already built. It's already built. Yeah, yeah, this, but I mean, it, this is all on the same owner and everything. But this, this is, this is built. This will have no effect on this unit. We're going to just look at that unit. Even if they have enough percentage of affordable units on there. I thought, that's what I thought, okay. that affordable units don't have to be on a particular site, they can be on another site. Right, but because these are rental units, well, I thought the same thing, rental or sale. 
means the same thing, either on the particular site or off-site. And this is so off-site, right? But this, this is... <clears throat> That's what I understood when we were talking about okay, this, this. This is outside the zone, though. Yeah, this is outside the overlay district, I believe. I mean, we're going to start the mixing. Overlay. Do you have to copy the map? Sorry, we're going to start mixing apples and oranges here. In other words, the 40B permit and the affordable it's housing, it. according to the zoning board of appeals, is one thing. And now, I mean, you, it's on its own. It's not done. This is coming the correct, in. no, no, I understand. Let me finish my thought. The fact is that now you want to use some of that with some of the uh, the senior housing units that you're putting up now. This is, this is, you're right, this is outside this open to the senior housing overlay district only goes as far as it, it, it's the same limits as the uh, village center overlay. Okay. Did, did this project build, did this project build all, the whole project under 40B? Yes. No, I think it did, yeah. Then how can they change, if it was awarded by the ZBA, they're going to have to go back to the ZBA? They probably have to amend the 40B. For, right, for change? To take that out. I don't know where the parking requirements came, but under our senior housing overlay, senior housing overlay district, it runs from the bridge to the bike path, <coughs> where the bike path crosses for so You would need, <coughs> we need a variance of the ZBA to do this. <coughs> it probably wouldn't be that difficult to do. Because you're putting it on the existing parcel over there. But it changes what <coughs> went under 40 B. Correct? Right. 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 He's mixing. <laughs> this should be, well, if he's going to yeah. use some of the affordable units under the existing building as affordable, he's basically putting up apartment units. Okay, no, 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 no. no. So, under the senior housing bylaw, if he were eligible, whatever is approved under that bylaw has to have the affordable units in it. Not okay. elsewhere. Okay. But, so, this he is not outside. saying that. You know, even if it's on site, but we're not outside. Going, well, it is by special permit, so we get to have some discretion there. And um, yeah, there's no, it's, it's going to be senior housing, that's fine, but we have to get over the threshold of whether you can put it there. Jim, of course, newcomers are all for newcomers. Where'd you come up with the number 40? Is it in the bylaw? It's in the bylaw? Yeah. There's a number of things that you do with it. There's a number in it that comes out to be Mr. Yeah. It's just something about five. Um, Senior housing dwelling units shall be limited to 5% of the existing single family residential right. housing. Right. Is that it? That's where it comes from. Okay. That 5%, Mr. Roberts, I believe, used about half of that 5%. Okay, which he wanted to use it all, but he wouldn't let, he wouldn't let anybody use it all. Okay. So there's about, like I guess that's why I'm saying 38 to 40, I'm not sure the exact number, but you know, it, it, we're not going to split here over two units. No. Sorry, how do we figure out what is generation? No, <coughs> so it falls out of the, the the district. Correct. So he needs he would need some kind of a I want to say finding or something from the ZBA. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be the next meeting then to see to, right. to, to see what they have to say. So you need two things from the ZBA. I think you need a, an amendment of your original 40B okay. yeah. to I don't know how they came up with the parking requirement, but that I, I don't that know. We, we didn't question it. Time. Okay, that was a long time ago. Yeah, anybody on that ZBA never said. No, no, no. It's right. So we need to get the amend, <coughs> to amend your 40B to uh, reduce the parking requirement. Yeah, okay. And then you probably have to ask for either a variance. I guess you have to ask for a variance yeah, because right. this is outside the overlay district. Right. And that's going to be a tough sell. I mean, yeah. no one objects. They'll probably give you one. They might give you one, but okay. there's really no basis for it. Okay. Most of the time, the variance is granted because nobody complains. Yeah. Okay. No well, no and, and, really and, and we're in the woods here. I mean, we don't have right. well, anybody around, basically. There were people complaining that <coughs> from your housing unit when they're going to build the apartments right next door in Amherst. Yeah. So, will they see people complain that they're going to be building houses next door? Well, hey. 
What are you telling them? People can, they can complain anything they want. I Did you ever see a woman not complain? I got a wife, she complains all the time. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. sorry. So, so the zoning board would be the next. Uh, yeah, so it goes right. to the need to the amendment for the need for the parking. And part of the var need to variance to extend the zone to do that. Right. And then of the 40 units, you need to make, make the 10% affordable, which would be yeah. Very, yeah. Okay. 40 units. Yeah. Um, which mm -hmm. is real, I mean, that, that's a probably a minor deal that overall scope of things. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we would, what if the purpose of the goes forward to make the decision mm -hmm. all favorable, then, you know, let us know and come back to right. and talk about it, and then you can start doing the plans. Okay, okay before you run away, for you guys to do this, you must have did some kind of a survey or research on a shortage of senior housing. Oh, yeah, well, at that time, there was, there was none. <laughs> no, this time. Oh, this time. Um, uh, no, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do any of that because uh, uh, we didn't think that it was going to be enough to alter anything, any problems that uh, would exist because we were only talking 40 units. Right. But you, you guys haven't did any research in actually sorting uh, a shortage of senior housing in, in the community? No. No, we haven't looked at that. Okay. Would these be rental units? Yes. Okay. Now you, just a separate question entirely, nothing to do with okay. you as far as verifying the affordability faction of the mm -hmm. applicant, you do all that yourself and you sell that out to somebody else? You know, we, we do that, we, we're working with a, a company in uh, Springfield that we did with this, um, but we'll probably uh, do whatever is required. Um, well, I, don't know, I don't know what to expect at this point because it was quite a bit different 20 years ago. And uh, um, uh, we, just, we just have to process bridges. As we can. So the affordable housing needs for an applicant to apply, you go through an outside agency to do the screening and everything else and that got to comply with the state law? Yeah, yeah, the, the company in Springfield does, you know, does that. We'll, we got this kind of problems we'll, right now. We'll probably talk to them again because we didn't really have much trouble with, with this the first time mm -hmm. around. So. Mm -hmm. Who is that agency? Uh, that if you was, might share. Uh, uh, Austin Miller. Um, yeah, Austin Miller. Yeah. One of my first clients. No, when an affordable client moves out and no one wants to move, mm -hmm. move in, how do you verify the affordability factor? Um, <laughs> I leave that up to the real estate company. We have a real estate company that handles that. But they do whatever they have to do. Okay. Uh, uh, my hands are full designing this stuff, so I kind of leave some of that okay. stuff to the other people. Uh, okay. So that uh, we haven't had any problems, but because uh, we we have our own real estate company that handles that thing, so. Okay. Uh, Everything's worked fine in, in both hands in here. Nobody okay. is. Okay. But whatever, whatever it takes, we'll, we'll obviously do it. It's not uh, arguable at this point. Okay. Yeah, but now we're we just want to this is just more for information for the new issues that we want to tell us. Okay. All right. All right. I'll okay. do that, and then I'll be back in touch with you as soon as something moves there. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I will tell you, Ramos. Uh, Hamilton Ramos with uh, Pride Stores. Yes, I'm here for an uh, update on our project that you guys know we're doing. Uh, Pride Stores. Pride. We're down the street. We have the new uh, gas station here. Uh, I just wanted to hand out these. Uh, these are partial sets or sets, miniature sets of the ones that we're submitting. Uh, required for the, uh, from the blast the time we were here. So these are the final, will be final copies of the full site plan approval set. Um, yeah, they're a little hard to read. That's why we brought full size. We'll give you guys full size. Did, did you bring a magnifying glass with you? Unfortunately, not this time, I did not. You, you've seen this before. <coughs> uh, these were approved. Yeah, but you know what? I may be seeing that, but I can't even read this. Oh, okay. Uh, so we'll give the full size if you want. We have the full size. 
Yeah. Well, we get a tell, tell us what you're, what, what, what you're doing. So well, basically, just bring these before you. Here's a cover letter that will explain, you know, what we, uh, what we're missing is the, on the cover, we need the new uh, approval from this board, the signature approval. Um, we just want to get before you, we're moving far, quickly ahead, we'll be completed in early May. Um, so we didn't want to uh, miss any steps that are required of us before we go for our certificate of occupancy. And this is one of the ones that we had to come back before you with a, uh, five sets or full sets of the final. Um, what steps do you think you could miss? Mm -hmm. Between now and then? No, what steps do you think you might possibly <coughs> miss? Uh, well, you've seen this before. You guys approved this. We just came back with a clean set uh, per your approval. So, you know, anything that was required of us at the time, we're talking uh, so <coughs> in the fall. We asked them to come back. My, ori the original approval approved according to a certain plan set as of a certain day. Right. 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 And we have had, you know, every, every month something changes, and sometimes the... Uh, Date is reset. Sometimes it isn't. Right. Um, so I think what we are we're supposed what we have to do to wrap up. And this, the engineers did send me a schedule of revised pages and revision dates, and then it's changed since then. Um, so I guess what we need is. Um, Okay. What, what I would do is propose is we do an amendment of the original site plan approval to approve the plans, the true final plans. Right. Which is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in order to make that less work, what I'd ask from you is to have your engineers just set email me so I don't have to go through and okay. hand enter all of the dates. No, you know, just Give it C1 revised March 1, uh, C2 revised December 9. Sure. Just just a schedule of right. what you consider to be final. Okay. And it's also on the cover. You'll notice that all these dates are on the cover. They're reflected on, on the schedule and the, on the sheet. Okay. Yeah, it'll be large here, but I can have them send it to you. Yeah. They, they, out. they can just yeah. email in, just so I don't have to copy. Sure. sure. We have the original plan somewhere. Yes. You don't have this plan. This is the final plan that's updated and changed? With, with all the revisions that we looked at and the date that they presented to us. Signage problems, right? For, for this has the, the final approved signage yeah. plan, all the correct dates on everything, the full sequence, everything's here. The last time they came in with, a, with, with, the, with the drawings, the revision dates didn't show on the drawing, so that you had two drawings mm -hmm. with the same revision date and number, but they were different. But, but there was, was different print dates on it. It's else, correct and all that. There was something all else was on, the, well, was on the original plan that wasn't on the plan that they brought in. Now, what the heck was that? Remember that? Oh, that? Well, the, one was the uh, electric charging stations. Yeah, is right. that shown yeah. here? That is shown here. Yeah, that is shown. There was um, some any of the site plans. The electric charging station and Tesla stations are right back here. Propane tank, right? Relocating. I think the, the fuel storage tank moved slightly. I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. um, nothing that was really um, aesthetic, except for the installing the electric charging stations. Right. Other, other stuff was underground that was moving. Are you leaving those plants? Yes, yet? these are for you. These are the final submittal for your records, as required. I certainly want to. See. That is everything marked up that was changed from the other plan to this plan? All the plans are updated as far as the dates. So if you're looking for any change, it'll be the most recent dates, December 17th, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And you'll see the plans. I want to look at that plan, and I want to look at the plan that we voted for. And if there's something different in there, you're going to have to answer for that. We will, and you'll see that there isn't. Okay. Well, except to the extent that there are changes. Right, changes that were approved, so there haven't been any changes since the last approval. This is just documenting all the last approved changes. So on the other plan is what we approved. Is that what you're saying? Yes, some place in the, in the room is there should, should be a set of plans of what we approved. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's what I want to put two of those things on one table, a big table, and check. 
next one. And you will see, like, like was mentioned before, there will be there was errors in the dates that were not corrected on one of those plans. If you're looking in detail, you'll see errors. But as far as the content of the drawings, what was approved, it's everything's on these plans. Yeah. And all those errors you showed us before? Yes, everything was shown, everything was, yeah, we, we discussed as far as the dates. Um, I, I can't answer that everything was, you know, I don't know what, you're, what you mean by errors. Uh, well, it was, it was uh, you know, again, the dates on some of the, the yeah, sheets. Yeah, all, all the sheets on here, from what I'm looking at, yes. has a date. Yes. And it has the update, plan updates. Right, the revision dates on are listed. Drawing C2, for example, has got a date, Tesla info was added. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, C3, Tesla info was added, and, and on and on through all, all the drawings. Right. Exactly. Under the comments. Really that's where you see a brief description of what was changed. Okay, so submit these to you. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> There's a lot of trees. Right a couple there. of trees right there. <laughs> so we can maybe at our next meeting plan to take a vote on amending <coughs> the decision okay. to reflect Okay. If I remember correctly, I think that vote was taken at the last meeting. I'm not sure I don't have the minutes, but it was uh, amended pending this middle of these drawings. Right. And, and, and But then a month later, you came in with different drawings. Or something was changed. So Tesla okay. came in a month later. Right, exactly. So and everything that we had originally voted right. was already modified. Sure. So we just, yeah. we, are you going to make any more modifications? We expect no more modifications. We're okay. trying to finish. We're inside a building now. We're we're waiting for the weather to warm up so we can start planting, and that's it. Make okay, it so I think that's up. that's what we need then. You, you you did vote to approve it up to a certain point, and then Tesla came in. Now Tesla's incorporated, so it should be everything. Um, so um, uh, I'll just make a note to. Uh, the vote to amend the final decision by incorporating this version. Okay. That's that's that would be the final update. That's the sign and everything. That's the right here. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll get me a just a yeah type up listing type of all of list. Yeah. All of that. What are you marking now for what meeting, Bill? Uh, we probably can take out the next meeting. Then in March. That was one March. 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 What we're trying to do is, um, friends of ours own property on Honeypot? Honeypot. Honeypot Road. And we're trying to see if we can use the place for camping for our family. We know we can't take down trees and all that kind of stuff because it's right on the river. But we want to be able to clear up brush, you know, that kind of stuff. That's what we're here for. Okay. There is a section in the zoning bylaw that allows you to put up a seasonal camp. Um, I forgot the exact time frame without without looking at all the stuff. But if you go onto the May to October, if you go onto the uh the zoning bylaws are online. Okay. And if you You need a special permit. You need a special permit from the CBA. The CBA. Yeah. GBA. yeah. Um, so that that was a we do a lot of special permits, probably most of them, but that particular one is the ZBA one. So I think Tim just forgot that. Yep. Okay. Um, so he, he to and the yeah. other thing is clearing near the river gets you a conservation commission. If you need to. Right. But the wetlands do want to feed back to the Rivers Act. Right. Like that. What are you going to use for uh, storage disposal? <coughs> we're, we're not going to uh, have any permanent buildings there. When we're there, we're, we're talking about having a porta potty there so we don't have any human waste and all that kind of stuff. Our trash is going to be leaving with us when we're there. Usually we're up there on, on our pontoon. We've got a pontoon boat that we're always going up and down the river run. And we just thought it would be nice if we could camp there too, you know, right across. There may be a Do you own the land? No. 
Where are you guys it's from? Friends of ours. Yeah, we're, we're from Delta Cat. Yeah. The people actually own the property or live in? They are living in Arizona. 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 From Hattie, Arizona. Do they know what's going on here? Yes, I, I got their name for <laughs> 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 That's a good start. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they're the ones that asked us to come they're, here. They're, they're the ones that wanted us to come here because they didn't want to have any uh, further problem with the town or anything because nobody came to talk to you first. So they asked us to come to the, to the meetings and see if we what's required. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I don't know either. So yeah. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to just go to the building inspection to be honest with you, but so we had to go here. 13.7 of the zoning bylaw has a whole section on development regulations and it says mobile residential uses and it gives you what you need to do. Okay. You got that? 13.7. 13. 13. Read, read out the, the time limits, Jim, so the audience can. Um, I thought it was made through October. Yeah, find it, find it. it has to be removed. Well, like I said, there's nothing going to be permanent there. It's going to right. be seasonal. It's yeah. seasonal, right. But many of them have become. I, I, I've seen that on there, you know, on the, on the river, and that point of the reason the building inspection, so we had to come over here because it goes, some people have gone overboard without permission. <laughs> Wait a minute, you've seen what? Seasonal, who the hell camp, campers on a river in the middle of winter? Sure. Down there now? You go go over the Coolidge Bridge okay. at night, and you'll see some lights okay. in the winter time. Um, from May first to October thirty first of each year. That's that's, that's, that's perfect. What we usually do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it's all in the thirteen point seven. All the all the dates, what you're going to yeah. do, and, it's, and the ZBA is the special <laughs> permit granting authority for that. That says it all. And it says right in there. Yeah. Now, Will, there is a new state bylaw. Someone with a camp kind of inform me uh, that have to do with porta potties and designation when it's pumped, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Isn't that you may have to comply with that. That's, that that's state statute in Board of Health, not us. Well, we've talked to, we've already did some little bit of research and we talked to somebody, what's that name? Parker's Portable. Parker's Portable. And he's going to come every week to do to, to you talk to our Board of Health? No. I haven't talked to them yet, no. Well, that's in their jurisdiction. That's, that's, that, 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 that's all spilled out of 13.7. Right. Okay. okay. Got it. Okay. Really? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Have yeah, fun. fun. <laughs> what is the zoning board? Uh, you can. You, top building inspector can put you in touch with them. John okay. Koski is the chairman. They, they meet as needed. Yeah. Oh, John okay. Koski of Maple Line Farms. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Clark. Hey, guys. Um, we're here to ask for an extension on our parking lot approval. No. No? No. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, because of the, what we ran into last time. Right. Of the how late uh, do you want it, or how, when do you want it to run through? You'll have to help me with that, because I have to go through the zoning board to get a variance on the bylaws is what we're attempting to do. That, that's at least six weeks. Okay. Just rounding it up, because there's going to be some on publication, newspaper, sure. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is May 6th, April 6th. May March sixth. March sixth. But April, I'm thinking April, May, June. Say first Tuesday in June. Great. And if you run into trouble, come back here. Yep. Again and then we'll throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> Fair okay. enough. Okay. First Tuesday in June is the fifth. We'll see that. Continue to be more uh, uh, continue to uh, very good. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck to you, John. Thank you. All right. Did second? Oh, I did. I'm second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any quotes? Motion carries. Okay. That's it for general information. And let's see, we took care of uh, Steve Lewis. So the eight lot subdivision. So where we left off was um, we were looking for a letter from the director yeah. of the BGW. We got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you got your copy. No, we reviewed that. In fact, I had to go to the uh, BMS five seminar with him last week, and we did talk about this a little bit. And he told me that he'd be getting a letter up, but he had no problem giving. Yeah. Taking over maintenance once it was accepted by the town. Yeah. And the letter from the, well, agreed. To the planning board regarding colony estates, 
I have reviewed the drainage plan regarding Colony Estate subdivision and have reached the maintenance of the system once the project is complete. For clarification, no maintenance or repairs will be provided to the subdivision's infrastructure by the Town of Hadley until it, ex until it is accepted by the Town. For further information or questions, call me at such and such. Sincerely, Marlo Warner II. So, anything else that we know of on this thing? That was the last outstanding item. We'll kind of make it clear uh, when you do put in for the town to accept the road that that will be part of yeah. the acceptance. So right. Right. it will never be confused. Are we going to talk about anything about affordable housing in there or not? Well, he's already said he's going to do, he's going to put original apartments, he's going to put them in one of those. That's his plan right now okay. to address it right now in down a road if something changes before the last unit, no, before the last lot is released, the last couple lots are released, he can always change his mind if he wants to, but for the time being. How do we know he's going to do it? It'll be deed restricted, I think. That's deed restricted. Because we can hold the last lot until he comes forward and says, this is it. So I'll bring proof of the recording. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that means you got to play nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds in a good mood today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait. Uh, so. Uh, you know, if you want to just read it to approve it according to the submitted plans and with the standard conditions, you don't have to read it all. Okay. Yeah, it's like seven pages long. Um, I will make a motion to approve mm -hmm. Colony Estate Subdivision 8 lots according to the normal conditions um, of subdivision and according to the plans submitted and the following waivers. Um, 4.3.3 scale, traffic study not required. Um, way you, wait, on, what's the 4.3 point scale? Do everybody know? What is well, that? That's just the, the drawing scale was different than what the subdivision size of the scale plans be. That's, that's all. Okay. Um, way the traffic study because it's on a, such a small scale, we didn't need a big traffic study. There is a horizontal curve in the roads, so we're waving. That it's okay to do that and all right go we <laughs> that's your writing yeah i know it's, uh, uh, something straight did, did the police oh. review this for the traffic everything um the engineers are i don't i'm not sure how they received a copy they did okay Good. was there any comment no no Wave, uh, so it's five foot. Uh, yeah. Wave in straight. Oh, this, the uh, road curves. The, the road curve minimum. That's minimum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Minimum straight distance, and the DPW will take over the road. The deep maintenance of the system once it's accepted by the town. And it says, as far as inclusion or rezoning, that for the time being, you're going to provide um, one rental lot of your choice and one of your developments. That's what you mean. Right. I'll second that for discussion. Okay. Go ahead. I got a comment. Yes. I would certainly like these departments, police, fire, to represent public safety. In a, in a project that involves public safety for a comment. If they don't have any comment, Go ahead. And don't bother them, that's, you know, that's in their realm. But if they just don't say nothing, that to me is unacceptable. I want them to do their job and participate in everything that goes on. Okay, you want to take that as an assignment to force them to do that? Because exactly. These plans, have all been sent to the police, the school. There's a whole list of, of people, of, of departments right. that are sent to I understand that, Jim. Okay, I understand. But let's make them do their job and respond to it. Because okay. I don't want them coming back after you that say, well, this is wrong, that's wrong, and you're going to spend extra money to comply with their things. Let them say it when the time is right. It's here. I'm not, a, I'm not a police officer, I'm not a safety officer. I don't know if I understand that. But the, <coughs> the, the, police, 
Sometimes I don't know what the, the hell. The police and fire used to give us, a, we just used to take the drawing, they didn't do it this time, they haven't done it for a while. They were just right on there, um, no comment. They don't talk about what it is now, it's well, Mike Barrett. <coughs> and same thing with you know, Mike Spanking Able. Um, but I have not cut that back from them in a while. We haven't had a subdivision in a while. No, but even, even the. Uh, oh, the other. The other plan also go to the same departments. I, I was in there talking to Bolton today. Okay. And it is, has to be clear that they are satisfied whether they didn't have any time to look at it. They need to look at it, and we want an answer from them. Okay. You agree with that? Okay. So there's no problems that way. Okay. Yes. So I'm not participating. It's kind of understood that we sent in the comments, like Jim said, that uh, no. if they had some objections, they bring the objections to us okay. in the written form. We've had the opportunity. Well, you you guys can vote for them. I'm gonna tell you that right now. But but if there's some kind of a problem or some kind of lawsuit down the road because of something that was omitted, well, you guys answer because I don't have to because I'm not voting for this until I hear from him. Okay. And if you guys are hot to trot, go for it. I still get that letter from them. Even right. Even if we approve it. Okay, anything well, else? I'll make a motion contingent upon the police report. Or, or no comment? That, uh, no, I want him to comment. No, no, no. What I mean by no comment is they have no comment, but you want to say at least... At, at right, least that everything is fine according to Mass Law and... Okay, the okay. so the motion on the floor is Jim's motion per this. So you want to add a conditional... Right. Contingent upon... Additional approval, and that would be so. I'll, I'll, I'll remove your second. Move, move, move. Yeah, okay. I'll withdraw your second. I'll withdraw the motion, and I will make conditional approval based upon written uh, comment of police and fire. Right, right. Only those two. Right. They represent public safety. That's fine. I don't have a real big deal with that. I'm sure they can do something. All right. I'll remake the motion as before with conditional approval based upon a written comment from the police and fire department. Second. Motion is second. All right. That's the new motion. Any other comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes 4 0 with a 4 0 1 abstention. Based on a few comments that we sh we received at our 220 informational session, uh, the two main topics that were discussed were um, hearing from a our engineer. Can we hold it again? Yeah. Uh, we're to two things you guys had asked us to talk about most were to. Uh, get back in touch with uh, our peer review engineer, site engineer, which was Bersha Design Group, who peer reviewed our project in. Let me pull, let me pull that, that bracket down too far, that's the problem. You know, the bottom one. No, the bottom one. The, the, the bottom one. The piece. Piece. The the no, that one. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of put it stay. this way so the camera can zing in on it as well. Uh, so just to repeat myself again, Beth, 
first reason we were back today or at your request was to uh, receive comments from our peer review engineer, which was Berkshire Design Group from 2016. And then the second was to uh, reevaluate the architecture of the two buildings. I have with me Larry Ruziecki from Doucette and Associates, our site civil engineer, and Tim Tobin from Phase Zero Design, our architect, for any technical questions that you guys may have on this. I want to touch upon the architecture first. Um, I still am not uh, at liberty to share the single tenant building that is here, but I did want to, um, there was some concern about the green and the mass of the green because it rendered solid. So what I did was pull some imagery from a, uh, another one of their buildings that were currently under construction with and I wanted to share that with you guys so you can see the materiality actually as it sits in the field and the colors. Uh, we have natural stone. Uh, the wood is still to be determined whether or not it is a, it is a natural wood product or a uh, faux, like a Parklex type of wood panel. And then uh, the green is a metal, metal green. In this image, it's rendered as like a board and batten or shown as a board and batten type of style. They're moving towards a panelized system, so it'll still have some texture. It's not going to be completely flat without any seams, but I wanted to show you guys at least what the green will look like right. in the so field. This wood and stone kind of stone appears yep. is going to be where? Yep, so the wood is here, Okay. and then the stone is here. And, and, this, and this, yep. this would be the green on that building? That's correct. Right. And in response <coughs> to comments from the previous one, uh, previous hearing, these two buildings didn't respond as well together, so we took that definitely into consideration and are trying to carry the same wood band that we have across into this uh, middle section of our new tenants, and we really feel like those, this really responds to that. If you want technical architecture, I'll leave it to Tim. I don't want to get into too much detail with it, but we feel, um, we feel we've taken your comments into uh, serious consideration and tried to respond to that. So with that said, yeah. would that stay the green or would it become like this? It, that's that's a green. That's the same color that it would be. That is the yeah, green. That is the green. It's just, okay. it's the way it prints out. It's just off. I, that's why I, I mean, want to this, this is not a bad, it's almost like a, I mean, I want to call it like a brown or super dark green. Yeah, it is. That's the, it's, That looks more like a... We don't, we don't have the capability of... Well, yeah, unless I did I, 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 I appreciate it. Wait a minute, what did you say you don't have the capability of doing? Uh, reproducing that unless it was a photographed image onto the rendering. Yeah. Okay. So rendering. that's why we brought the picture yeah. of okay. what it is. Okay. And every printer we use, I mean, he prints it at his office and I yeah. print prints from my print office different. and they look completely different. Yeah. It's what happens to this plan when you first came in? Yeah, so that was our 2016 renderings. Right. Um, so comments regarding architecture were to make sure these two buildings match and to pay homage, but like sort of respond to those comments as well. We have no metal panel system in this here. We've moved away from that, but we do have, with we have carry, with the exception of the canopies, we have incorporated still the brick and the wood panel. Well, that is this still this plan it. here looks Totally different than that one. Okay. Total, I mean, I like this. I think this is really looks sharp. It would look sharp there, but I don't like that. And I told you that before. You did, and um, and it didn't make any difference because you just come back with the same thing. Yeah, I I can't come back with exactly that because our our buildings have changed, and those two buildings were multi-tenant buildings. The two buildings that we have now, one is a single tenant building. It's a national retailer, again, which I... Then why the hell did they come in with, with this plan in the first place? Then? At the time, we didn't have this single retailer to, in 2016. Well, you think it kind of raise the skyline up, though? You just don't want one flat surface? Yeah. Like we really, we really like what, what we have here, good, actually. what we're presenting. Like that. Thank I like you. That. I, don't, I, don't, I think that the, uh, the, green, the green on the end, is to me a bit of an eyesore. Like I'm not going to, even if you know if it's brown, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But the wood and the stone, I think, look. Yeah. And, and and the 
differences in height, like Mike said, looks look pretty yeah. good. That was another comment you had made. Yes. You know, I, also, I, I, I think that's kind of yeah. pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, we really uh, we're really happy with how this came out. Well, like. uh, I'm not so happy because okay. you showed me just one photo. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts is that going to be in the whole building? What's the whole complex going to look like? Is it going to look like this all the way through? So the that wood that you're seeing there, yeah, that's the wood band that would be carried across in the second building, as well in the uh, so single tenant. So why didn't you building. bring that kind of plan in? I'm sorry, what was the question? Why did you bring that this kind of plan in on that and show us? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm. This, if you're saying yeah. this, this is that, this, this is if that. you're showing this yeah. wood is that wood band, yeah. this stone is that, is that stone. stone. Yeah. It's identical to that stone? Bring, yes. Bring, bring, that, bring, bring the building, bring that plane close to John. Yeah, bring, bring that. So that he can see that. I only got one eye, and I used to see around corners, but then I can't do that. You so this, that, that. So this is a this is a brick that matches exactly. This, this stone brick. is right here. And what is this? Well, that's, that's just this is brick. This, is, this brick. is a brick which is, which was in these previous renderings that we had done. And this is the wood that's right here. Yeah. Which was and also this, in this. This well. this green color yep. is going to be these two. Yes. Or Thank is, you. Are both of these here? Or yes. This was both. Both, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Same green. All right. There. So if it's not this color, yep. what you're showing us, it's that. It color. is that color. It is that it's color. That color. It it's just the way if you would so put that color in. You can't reproduce it over there. You can't reproduce it. I can't it. reproduce it. No, I'm just asking you a question. Right. If you're going to put that color in, yep. then we reject the plan. I'm but if they're going to put this in, what they show us, yep. it's that's, going to be that's that. That's what we're going to do. And we, we can make that explicitly yep. in the... In the that's the, that's, the, that's, that's the color it's going to be. Yeah. This it, We tried to match it as best we could. That's why I wanted to bring you an image so you could see. I only have a certain amount of colors that I can formulate through the printing process in it. And then the second was having a Berkshire Group review. Uh, Larry can get into more details on it, but we had um, Berkshire review site drainage. We're still treating uh, the water similarly to what we were doing in 2016. And he responded uh, <coughs> In his peer review, so if you if you have any further technical questions, I'll direct them to Larry. I guess the only thing wanted is, is a long-term maintenance of the system. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. Good evening. My name is Larry Rizeki. I'm a civil engineer that works for VSAT Associates out of East Hampton. Um, as Dan mentioned, we coordinated our peer review with Mark Carl. Um, I did draft up a, a long-term operation and maintenance plan. I can present that to the board if you'd like at this time. Yes, please. Um, basically, it is focusing on the, the project area, uh, specifically the, the deep sub catch basins, right. uh, the separator hoods that are attached within the structure, and the proprietary stormwater system, which is a more technical unit. Yes, that's going to be that EDS type of unit on the ground? That is, uh, it's concrete. Yeah, it's well, small whatever. Chamber. What I mean, that's kind of what you mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is the... Uh, it's, it's still a draft, you know, obviously we'd have to work it out with, with um, Dan and his uh, operations and so forth, but it gives a schedule, it gives uh, inspection requirements, um, and, there's, and there's also a schedule of who does what and when. Okay, when you do come up with a final plan, we email it to the truck. Okay, yeah. so thank you. Um, this is pretty much in compliance with the <coughs> MS4? Um, well, there is a, a separate separation between uh, drainage and sewer already on site. No, no, no. Uh, what I mean by that is as far as the stormwater goes and how you infiltrate your Is this mostly an infiltration system? Uh, no. Uh, the, the BMPs are, are for removal of TSS, right. total suspended solids. So we're not altering or modifying the existing on site stormwater management. We're removing 80% or greater. TSS from this on-site improvement to okay. the existing drainage system. Okay. For point of clarification, how does the water drain now? Yeah, if I may. Um, there's multiple subcatchments. Um, there's drainage structure, a drainage trunk line that runs from approximately uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken down the, the Access Drive, ties into the Manny's. 
ties into the Burger King. I'm sorry, Burger King ties into that. Florence Savings ties into that. That trunk line continues along uh, to the existing on-site stormwater management system. Does that water goes into this the whole area? Is all clay. Mm -hmm. That water does not just disintegrate. Well, it goes into the uh, to the brook to the swale behind to the. Uh, that's the brook behind the it's, liquor it's store. A store. That's Where does the brook go? Uh, it eventually goes uh, towards. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, sure. To, to the south. To the south. No, I want to hear what, what he's going to say. Yep. I was just, just confirming which way the north arrow was on the, on the plan. All right. So it goes towards the south. South where? Where does it dump into? Uh, the existing swale kind of runs. I believe there's a, a liquor store on the corner of Russell Street. Liquor store in Duckett, though. Yeah, it kind of runs down and meanders on the southwest side of the existing <coughs> mall. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. That travels through and ends up in Fort River? Correct. That is correct. I don't know if there's any other... Um, well, so, are you the engineer or is he the engineer? I want to find out... That is correct. Typically, I want to find out if you walk all the way down and report where it's dumped into, is there any downstream work that needs to be done by doing this? And is it going to cause any harm on downstream? And then what happens when you dump this in to upstream? Upstream is also okay. dumped we've into already, that. We've already approved this. Is that correct? I'm asking a question. Well, I'm trying to keep it on track. We've already approved the design. That's not the issue before us. Tonight. But it's drainage. i got a question. The, the drainage is the same now, probably except for the addition of some some uh, new catch, catch revised what catch faces. And to clarify or to answer the question, as part of this redevelopment project, we're actually reducing the amount of uh, impervious area pavement. Uh, we're adding more green space. So with regard to mitigating the stormwater runoff, mm -hmm. we're reducing that. Although you, met, you did mention the soils are poorly drained, uh, there is some infiltration between in, in the green space areas. So we're reducing it by approximately uh, 0.3 acres. But the whole area is all clay. Right? Un understood. Understood. Yeah. But there are some mulch area, landscape yeah, areas. Just, uh, one of the problems that they have with, in terms of drainage is these drainage ditches are not maintained downstream. And that's not your responsibility, but it's a problem that the town has, and I don't know how they're going to address it. I want to find out just if it is responsibility of you represent our board, you're doing this for our board to recommend if this is fine or not fine. And, and, and how far uh, how far do you go with that? Do you go all the way to where it dumps into it? Because the whole town is in big problems with drainage. And everybody just kicking the can down the road. I mean, they've done that way back from I know when. But what's going to happen when all this is backs up, plugs up, and then what? And, and to, to answer that question, um, the Mass Stormwater Handbook has um, 10 stormwater standards. And to address uh, total suspended solids, which is particles within the right. stormwater runoff, right. uh, we need to uh, remove approximately 80% or greater. Right. So as part of this redevelopment portion of, of the existing wall, we can demonstrate um, how the treatment train um, is treated on site prior to the ultimate reacher, mm -hmm. prior to the ultimate discharge. Uh, so as part of our drainage improvements, we are uh, installing a proprietary device, which was tested on site and through the mass, uh, UMass STEP program. Um, it's on an accredited list. Um, and that device will be incorporated into WS Development's long-term operation and maintenance plan where they're going to go out there biannually, uh, remove any sediment, uh, routinely inspect it. If there's any uh, items that need to be addressed, uh, they will address it at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and as well as other structural components upstream of that device, which are uh, deep sub catch faces. So there's a sump involved, uh, as well as a, a hood to remove some of the, the floatables uh, and oil and water. So that's how we're addressing the stormwater as part of this region. But you still didn't answer my question. Mm -hmm. Beyond the boundary mm -hmm. of their project, it goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Who's responsible for that? Is it our responsibility as a planning board to make sure everything is okay where it accepts all this? Or that just happens by itself? I just, I want an explanation of that. Because I know you know the town, our town is a flat town, and there's, there's bigger and bigger, uh, what do they call them, swamps creating all over the place because the soils are no more longer draining. They're backing up and there's repercussion of everything that happens, but do you go any further to make sure everything's in fine air or do we need the trench cleaned out to the, to the river? Or what? How, how far do you go in this? Okay. With, well, it's kind of a two-part question. The, the first question is where is the stormwater ultimately going? Right. And we are um, demonstrating that this portion of the, light, the lot is actually improving the off-site or the discharge of stormwater from the property. Um, there are structural components on site that uh, these improvements are tying into. Uh, but ultimately, we, we generally satisfy uh, the 10 stormwater standards for stormwater runoff leaving the property. The second part of the question is with regard to the long-term operation and maintenance plan. Um, and that comes into our uh, anticipated condition of approval and so forth. Uh, and that is ultimately the responsibility of the, the property owner. Uh, they have to quarterly go out and make uh, visual inspections. They have to maintain their structural components. Um, and address any stormwater related right. items. But what I'm saying is, the town eventually, if it has e even has easements, and I don't know, I didn't check that out, they have a lot of easements from that point all the way down to the river because not only that they drain the project here, it may drain Route 9, mm -hmm. it may drain Mill Valley Road. And if all this is just, everything is taxing the system, taxing the system. And if you go around town and you look at all the ditches, all the ditches are just filling up. And that's happening all over town. And nobody seems to give a damn about it it's and not, correct it. It's not that they don't give a darn, it's that if we don't have an easement and a property owner won't give us one, then there's nothing that can be done yes. to correct it out. You can take easement for uh, utilities and other purposes. So, water okay, 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 now, this is a whole different thing that we're talking about here. We're gonna so, stick to the project so again. Let's just, <laughs> let's try this question. <clears throat> Are you required to retain all water on site or can you let water go off site? Uh, you may allow discharge of stormwater from your property. You, you're not allowed to increase the rate. Uh, the rate. Exactly. And we can demonstrate that we are reducing the rate of discharge. you're not obliged to contain all drainage. You're not obliged to contain all drainage. Because that land like, can't. The, you're obliged to make every effort, and I'm going to get into a lot of details here, to retain, because they're in the act, <coughs> they are re requested, required, to contain as much drainage on site and not flowing off site. Given the soils, they are retaining what they can, but it is minimal because of the soil types. Where the drainage has good infiltration, it's a different story. Correct. Correct. For example, uh, Mr. You, Mr. Jelinks, he's got a great drainage up there. He is essentially retaining 100% on site. Right. And, and as part of our coordination with Mr. Darnold at Berkshire Design, I can present to the board more exhibits uh, that support his, his letter and findings. Uh, we put together a, a pre verse post uh, exhibit that shows the soils, that shows the amount of pavement, green space, and so forth. Um, and we demonstrated that there is a, a net reduction in impervious. Although it's not well drained soils, there are green spaces as part of this. This new, new portion of the redevelopment project. Okay, thank you, Larry. The parking, yep. parking regarding the uh, you have increased the square footage yep. or decreased? 
We have an increase in square footage from the 2016 plan of just mm -hmm. over 3,000 square feet. Uh, we are requesting under the TDR um, uh, farmland uh, preservation bylaw. Again, I have the calculations for you guys to put onto our conditions of approval. Uh, we are providing five parking spaces per thousand square feet in this area, which is uh, more than acceptable for typical retailers. Typical retailers usually like to see anywhere between on the low end 3.5 to four spaces per thousand. So we are, we have more than sufficient parking for our retailers. So I wish, I wish how much short parking do you want to park? Sure, again, parking. We have um, total occupied GLA in the entire center would be 409,988. And then, which would in essence require 820,000 square feet of parking area. We're providing 776,861 square feet. I can give you this as well, okay. Mr. Chairman. We're deficient 43,000 square feet of parking area, which is less than what we had previously. I have a pen if you need He's looking for his calculator. Oh. No, I'm sure. What's the, uh, the cost? Uh, well, I'm looking for the what's required on the TDR. Oh, I see here, 10.78, 10.78 is the call. Yeah, I did that. Math I'll, I'll out. Call the math out. Okay. okay, the last calculation we had The um, site plan approval with special permit. So, well, how, uh, the apartment, how much? How much under? How much do we excuse last the party? Yeah, I have that. Uh, mm -hmm. Previous approval had thirteen point eight nine acres that we would be, in essence, for farmland. The deficient parking area ended up being fifty-five thousand five hundred fifty-six square feet. So, cost per acre was a nine thousand ten. I think it was. Uh, yeah, it's in here. It was around nine thousand okay. per acre. If we don't have a figure for two thousand eighteen yet, the cost of TDR. What, what is the APR cost per acre? That was nine thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight dollars fifty-seven cents per acre. How much was it? $9,978. That's the latest figure. We've got that the latest figure left to go with. Okay. That was, yeah. That's great. So that is 9978 90, You're asking for a TDR on this? Yes. Well, we gave him a TDR the last time. We gave him so. a TDR because it's going to be amended. The amount. Conservation Commission usually, John, gives us that information every year and it changes modestly. Well, I never liked that TDR by law in the first place. I think you look into a crystal ball and you say, well, there's not going to be no parking in 20 years or what. Then you take away parking that you should have and population has risen parking lots are getting filled up and uh, we're decreasing So we previously given you a reduction of 27,778 square feet. And you're now looking for what? 10,000, oh. 20, were you saying park building area bill or so parking? Post uh Tiger County stage required to secure a reduction in the required parking area of twenty seven thousand seven hundred and seventy eight square feet. Uh we're twenty one thousand five hundred and seventy square feet.
From what? From 27. 27. So you, you're looking for, you've picked up 6,000 square feet mm -hmm. in, with your reconfiguration. Yes. Excess parking in the in front of Walmart. As well. Do you ever have that parking lot during any time of the year or part of the year loaded? Uh, the current out parcel area? No, the oh, whole parking lot. No. no, it's never loaded. Not we've never had it completely. Not Black Friday, not no. Christmas, not no. Thanksgiving. No. It was close the day before Christmas. Yeah, they usually the Christmas. I remember like only one time. I think it was like Thursday afternoon before yeah. Christmas yeah. that I couldn't find a parking place in there. Yeah. So you know what happened? I took my money elsewhere. It's up to them to. Yeah. It's we in feel their best interest to provide enough parking. Yeah, the, we feel like we we provide more than enough parking for our customers. Obviously, the worst. This the is last thing we want to do. Right? Yes. Yes. So thank you. How do you project this out for a 10 years or 20 year period? Um, I can't answer that. I don't know. No answer? Yeah. The hook you love. What? The hook you love is going to move here. Five guys. Yeah, five guys. Yeah, five guys. How the hell did the hooky wow get into this? Because they're repurposing what their their business is in Chicopee, and businesses do repurpose their sites because they have to adopt it, adapt to change. Change or change will change you, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. So what you're looking for is uh, approval of our amendment of site plan approval. Mm -hmm. Amendment of TDR. And so the only sort of threshold question is, is this such a significant change that it warrants, requires reopening site plan approval? My comment is you guys can do it, but I'm not voting for this because it's very unclear to me. And somewhere along the line, we get to stand up and step up to what's going on with all our drainage. They can maybe show the site, but I'm concerned on upstream flooding and downstream flooding. And the guy from Berkshire Design, 
it was not clear to me that he, in fact, followed wherever this water dumps to, and it's not going to cause any any kind of problem. So until that happens, I'm not voting for that. And I don't and I don't believe in your TDR. So I, you know, if this were a new project coming to us, that would be one thing. This is a project we previously approved on a site that's previously been developed, and they're actually reducing the impervious surface. So I don't think it warrants reopening uh, hey, discussion of drainage. I, agree. I don't tell you how you think or what I you told think. You, I told you what I think. Right. I'm going to make a motion that the changes oh. do not warrant reopening site plan approval or TDR. Okay. Re reopening or, or re I say we don't need to reopen site plan approval. I'll make another motion to amend. All right, but all right. We're going to get through that one. Okay. This one first. Then. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Both, both, yeah. Motion passes four to one. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. And now. Uh, Uh, so, now the next thing is a motion to waive further site plan approval and to amend the TDR. Um, so, uh, what is the revision date on that plan that you showed us? Uh, pictures. <coughs> yeah. With regard to the site plan? Well, site both. Plans? Both. Everything, yeah. yeah. Site plans are dated. Uh, I haven't. Because. I have signed sealed drawings, okay. uh, so, so I dated them today. These are half size, but I have the, the complete site plan application electronically. PDF. Okay, that's great. And those are dated today. Yeah. Okay. And the renderings are dated March 6th. Okay. Well, today. 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 Yeah, today. And if you'd like, I can give you hard copies to go with this. Oh, this is good. That's not this is the, the, the drawings or PDF files? That is correct. Okay. Oh, the, the site, site plan, yeah. Uh, before we make the, uh, the final vote, uh, always the contention for signs. You'll get a particular client, they'll want a bigger sign that as zoning bylaw permits, and it's always a discussion. Uh, just to let you know, must conform to our bylaws. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the theory, you could go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. We've objected to the Zoning Board of Appeals because it's definitely not a hardship for a bigger and bigger sign. Okay. Speak for yourself. I don't object. Well, uh, from someone that was very much pro business regarding signs, it seems that you're not very much pro business regarding some other issues. So, uh, don't tell me about signs because I, every time you guys, if you wanted, you would put a sign six inches in diameter. Uh, negative, negative, John. Yeah, because negative. if you paid attention to the town meetings, we did require, <coughs> we did request bigger signs at the. And the town overwhelmingly voted the sound. So How many years ago was that? The last one was about five. Yeah. Times are changing. Right in the in the retail business, they're just about hanging on because of uh, Amazon. Well, I'll repeat companies. the side that uh, the, the comment that I've said before: Zares, Almy's, Wolco's, Kmart had the biggest signs in town. Yeah, well, it's too bad. Guess what? Too bad they paid They're not here. Okay. okay, so I can make a motion to waive further site plan approval um, and uh, grant. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to amend, I'm sorry, um, to adopt the, um, <coughs> the site plan dated uh, March 6th and the rendering dated March 6th. Uh, and note that it reduces the impervious surface. What's this to do with it? That's, that's the most you're supposed to site plan. You're the same plan or the TDR? You're going to make a separate one for TDR? I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'll make a separate one. Second yeah. up, motion. That's a site plan. Okay. A motion a second. Site plan? Site, site, site plan. plan. Yes. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes four to one. 
Okay, and then um, I'll make a motion to, uh, to amend TDR. And we'll take it to uh, 10.7 eight, eight acres at 99.78 for a TDR contribution. What's the rate? 107. 9,978. 107, 563. That's the motion? That's the motion. Here, second. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That motion passes for the word. I think you're all okay. set. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Appreciate gentlemen. your time. Thank you. Time of construction. Destruction and then construction. Um, probably late third quarter, early fourth quarter this year. So there's more. Later this year. Yeah, later this year. So <coughs> I certainly encourage you to be talking with DPW, and you need to get in with the select board. Yeah, for uh, the um, South, South Maple. Maple. Okay. And Is it a similar process to this, or do I? I believe it's the, it's the same thing that, that was done last time, right? There's a revision of that. We never went to the select board because the mass dot was potentially thinking of taking that on. So, oh, is this the one where the where the yeah. end, where, where the north south Maple Street is yeah. going to be reconfigured yeah. with the, with the line down the middle? Three I haven't heard anything about right, that. Right. Yeah, that that would go no. to the uh, um, DPW yeah. director and the select board. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. You have to just get get down, get a hold of uh, David Nixon, and he can have the select board agenda so that they can start discussing that. But you're you. right; nothing's happened. I'm on the stakeholders. Yeah, so same. And I haven't heard anything. You know, once long a long year, yeah, you hear something. So, okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Okay. 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 Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But be sure to allow enough time to get that. <coughs> Okay, they yeah, will start that very Yeah, soon. they move slowly and um, okay. there are a lot of moving parts there. Do they meet, are they a once a month they board? Are they two or three times a month? Okay. So 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 Smoke typically meet on Wednesday evenings. Okay. Um, almost every other, if not every Wednesday, lately. Okay, um, great. They are in the bu budget run up to town meeting, so yes, they're not going to be too happy okay. to see you uh -oh. soon. <laughs> yes. But. Uh, you know, by uh, okay. that first Thursday in May is okay. town meeting, and after that, uh, there it should be okay. clear. And I should probably I should wait until I get your decision before I do that, or can I at least start, probably start the process? You, you, you got our decision better okay. getting it typed up, but there's no appeal on this thing. Okay. So you want to start seeing me? Okay. Oh, get on the agenda as soon as you can. Got it. Get Thank you guys. Up. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. There's no appeal on the line. This has already been approved. It's not an appeal. This has just sort of been an amendment. Good evening. You have something for. You don't have the drawing, right? Okay, that's fine. All right, yeah, this is Okay, um, nothing new on the library senior. Oh, planning article for 2008 town meeting. I think I, I talked to Dave. Well, I mean, actually, I would like to just take a minute to talk about the uh, library and senior center. Uh, you know, again, I was, we need coordinated plans. Well, we're working on that. They have part of their architect two weeks ago. Our architects for the last uh, 10 do, days yeah. have been working really hard. I am pleased to report because there was some conversation at our last meeting that there's more oh, than okay. ample square footage to have the building, the parking, and the green space. The last plan I saw showed 2.2% um, parking instead of the required two and an extra nine. 29% total green space. That doesn't include, that includes just the parcel. Yes. Who not, told you that? Not the green space in front of the building that belongs to the town. No. Who told you that? Who gave you that information? Our architects. The what? The architects. Is, is the Goodwin Memorial Library going to be included into this concept? of our? We need to find out what the plan is for the Goodwin Memorial Library so that we can decide whether or not parking is needed to be supported for that. Mr. Neinhardt has said that it is currently a municipal building. 
it will remain a municipal building, therefore no change of use and the parking will remain as required well, as it what is. What I was going to, what I'm saying, but what will the new, Munis what will the Goodwin Memorial Library be used as? I, the select board has not decided. I know, and until a select board notifies us, we don't know, if, right now there's nine spaces roughly for the library. Yes. Okay. If the Goodwin Memorial is going to become a meeting hall, Nine spaces is an act. But we have access to all the senior set. So we need to see the plan. Yeah. Okay. My question is, we only have one site that we're working with that the town has given us. It's combined between the senior center and the library. And the Goodwin is on a totally separate parcel. That is true. But the Goodwin uses parking on this site right now. Right. Yes. So we can't ignore the Goodwin Memorial Library site. There will be parking. Okay, we need to know, we, we need to see the combined. Yeah, you know, fine. We, it's very difficult to say what we need without seeing what is done. Okay. Okay. I, I confronted for, I confronted David Nixon, again, to where this planning board is gonna go because the senior center, no one don't want, not, nobody but themselves in it. And it's quite obvious of that. And he said that the planning board would most likely be housed in the old Goodwin. They're going to repurpose it for municipal use, where they would hold TV5, where they would hold the Conservation and Historic Commission. In it. And my concern is, is the parking that we sometimes generate. The nine spaces do not cut the muscle. Well, let's let's see the plan. Well, you actually need to see the plan for it, right? Okay. Just don't have your plan. Okay. Any yeah, idea when the total plan is going to be together? As soon as possible. So I think they you we are we could take a date, a potential date to come. We're going to have a, a open meeting next Thursday, the fifteenth, at Hopkins, for an update on where we are, and I hope you will all come because the plan should be there then, six o'clock. Six o'clock Just curious, why are you holding a, a separate meeting rather than coming to the planning board? Oh, because we don't have our plans ready for the planning board. We're still in the, the design development. Well, why don't you wait till you get your plans? Hopkins? At Hopkins. At Hopkins. Excuse Sorry. me, why don't you get your plans all together for before you have any form? Because what the public would like to see doesn't require the same things that you would like to see in detail. Well, they can hold some, they can hold that information. Yeah. Why didn't they do it before the action at town meeting? People are interested. Yeah. Most people are more interested in the inside of the building. We're not at all interested in the inside. I don't think you're interested in anything, Bill. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else <clears throat> for that? No. Okay. Um, Planning article for the uh, 2000 for the next the town meeting, um, I believe, is four positions, four slots. Um, one for amending the scene, the uh, inclusionary zoning. One possibly for then the senior house. Maybe we can do that one article. I'm not really sure, but there's one, one space for each one. Possibly something on MS4, and then the other one is kind of unknown right now. But I've asked David for our position. We can come, we'll find out more about that in the next meeting when you play it or the planning commission comes in with the lady with the MS4 stuff because it's both going to be zoning bylaw revision on MS4 and a general bylaw revision on MS4 for so we have both right now. So the person Larry is bringing in to our next meeting is the housing specialist. So he said she was going to, was going to be somebody coming on MS4 I thought. Okay. We'll clarify with it. Okay. Who said that? There. Okay. Um, next one, our general stuff is uh, last Wednesday, I went to a seminar in Springfield with Marvel, D2W director on MS4. Um, very Complicated. Sounds like a Costa Rican gang. 
places like Chicopee that have a very old sewer system dating back to the really early 1900s. There was a guy that actually was from Chicopee. He says they were about 65% complete on separating their systems. They have spent roughly $185 million separating. The next 35% is going to cost them well over $200 million to finish it up. And they're working on it, and they're spending a huge amount of money, obviously, doing this. And it's the right thing to do. Other, other cities are doing something. Um, whatever, I'm not going to get into that because we were discussing it. Okay? Um, the third slide is all about it. Is, is, um, really has a little bit to do with uh, planning board and bylaws and stuff like that, and adopting and changing and require, what they're going to do as far as the new MS4 in our bylaw is require as built storm plans, storm water plans, which we already do, but we need to make a, get a, be more stringent on making sure we get this. You know, my comment on that is even when I was in the sewer department, that is a key factor in maintaining in the operations of a system. You don't have that, you're just chasing your tail around yeah. water. So, yeah. um, again, again, the fourth page stormwater standard, it talks about um, all private disturbing greater than one acre must comply with mass stormwater standard one, two, three, five, and six. And just for that, like, you, you can go on this computer, you can get all this information online. And I've got the, the actual one, two, one, two, three, five, and six stormwater standards. Just type in mass stormwater standards and bingo, you can, it comes right up. Um, mass water standards. Mass mass stormwater standards. Yes, <coughs> and I think the website. This site. Uh, type in that, and it comes right up. This one. Right? Yeah, just type that into the search field and come right up. And just move along. Yeah, and. Then you go to the next page, which is uh, the next page. The stormwater treatment requirements. So it's a new development, and this is a statement. This is the EPA requirement. The new development must retain the first one inch of runoff from impervious area on site, and or remove ninety percent of the solids, suspended, um, solids. suspended solids in catch basins. If it's a redevelopment like they're doing today, they only need, they only need to separate 80%, which is still a lot. Um, the next page simply gives you a timeline for doing this, and this is where the planning board could revise the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw to comply. The reason for revising both is the zoning bylaw addresses anything from this point on in time, anybody that's already in place could be grandfathered. By revising the general bylaw, there's no grandfathering. Um, then the year then after that, you get another page that says year one major requirements, and they give you different things that are required to be going on um, for the town to be doing. Then it's got the next page is year two major requirements, and like I said, these are just different slides I pull out about a, of a multi-hundred page slide system. Then I bet you a collaborative stormwater program that DPW has a whole list of things to do. Conservation has some stuff to do. Planning, these are recommended. These aren't by any means law or have to be done by these groups. The Board of Health is obviously responsible for septic systems and the IVD is illicit discharges. Is what? Illicit discharge, like somebody, let's say somebody has a septic system, a prime septic system that dumps into a stormwater system. That's basically doing it. Or they're, 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 uh, they're dumping some kind of chemical in. Okay. Like the old days, dumping sewer into ponds. Right, exactly, yeah. That kind of stuff. Uh, next thing that talks about a little bit of a list of discharge, what is illegal and what is allowable. Some allowable things to be discharging into the stormwater system or water line, uh, landscape irrigation, Diverted stream flows, rising groundwater, uncontaminated, uncontaminated groundwater infiltration, uncontaminated pump groundwater. 
Um, this started from potable water sources, foundation drains, air conditioning, condensation, and the list goes on. And again, that's all. I'll give you guys the links that you can look into that. One of the things that's very, I found interesting under the uh, illicit discharge is mass DLT will allow nobody existing or proposed to tie into a mass DOT drainage stormwater system. And they highly recommend Wait a minute, read that again? Last more than the last page. Right here. No. The last page. This one. No, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. Go to I D D E. Uh, missing it? There it is, this one, that page, right there. Mass DLT prohibits a drain connect, have a drain to connect them policy that they will not allow any discharge or connection to any mass DOT drainage system, unauthorized versus illicit. And they simply will not, they don't want anybody tying into a state drainage pipe. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I was over the mass highway in, uh, Northampton with the seniors center project and the picture of the library. And I asked them, did they ever see this before? That drain that's out in front of on 47, right? When I see next in an office, I think, what are you going to do with the overflow from the system of these projects? Oh, we can tie that into the drain. I, I, I had that hard to believe. I went to see the state, and the state, I talked to uh, the guy, he's, in, uh, he's the guy in head of maintenance. He looked at the maps. Yep, that drain does belong to the, to the state. They paid for that. The state drains are tied into that line. And if this doesn't allow it, that you saved there, then there's going to be a problem as to where the, the overflow is going to go. I'm telling you what the slide presentation and what well, I'm just discuss. telling you what I understand. What I understand, and, I, and, and that needs to be investigated by somehow, some way. Right. Um, but the state specifically says prohibited by range right. connection policy. And they highly recommend municipalities don't allow tie-ins to a municipal drainage system. Right. So, again, I'm not trying to defend or say otherwise. I'm just simply giving you information and what this, what the uh, MS4 is about. And no sense. Okay. Um, let's see. Plenty more procedures. You want to request on that, Sean? Right. I just want to find. Total procedures in this board, what a person has to do, or persons, and I get a problem seeking information for the senior center and the library. Okay. And I have contacted the Ethics Commission, like I said to you guys that I would be signing off this board if the Ethics Commission follow me in, in conflict. And I really mean that, and I went even further with this to try to understand things that weren't presented at the town meeting, and everything that I've, I, I was at that town meeting, I couldn't understand nothing what they wanted to do. I feel it was so incomplete that it just drives me up a wall even thinking about it. I go, I was over to the senior center to talk to the director to find out. They're saying, well, it's a safety reason. Why, number one, is a building setting back? Safety reason. Well, can I find out what the report is, who it's from, where it's from? It's a safety. Well, then who is the safety? Is it a safety engineer? Is it the Department of Public Safety? So from no answer, 
So I went from there to the police department because they're the Department of Public Safety for the Dominant. Yeah, but you're talking about something that isn't in front of us right now. This I'm just, you know what, every time I try to explain something, you gotta stick your nose in every time I do something. I don't, I don't tell you what you want. Don't tell me what the hell I want. I want a clear explanation of this, and I want to know why the hell this town is trying to do everything to stop me from getting all the information. And furthermore, what does that have to do with planning board procedures? That furthermore, you know, Mr. Lawyer, you know all the answers, but you know what? You know nothing. Okay, John, no, he's getting me peeled. Okay, let John speak, please. Yeah. I went to the town administrator. I went to your wife as the town treasurer. Roadblocks all over. Them. I said, as a member of the planning board. I swore under oath that I'm going to do what is legal, what is right for the best interest of this town. I don't just represent you, Mr. Dwyer. You probably never voted for me anyways, and I really don't care. Because that's irrelevant. I know, but listen, you guys swear to do a job the best of your ability under the law and everything else. One thing about me, and always about me, and one thing about a good lawyer, he always does his research and homework before a lawsuit, not after the lawsuit's done or settled. And I learned that from a few lawyers. And I don't want to be a lawyer. I wouldn't want to be a lawyer. But I certainly want to be thorough. I certainly want to know everything that is related to a project before I cast a vote. When they stop me, then they can go find a vote elsewhere. And so can you. You can go find. You can't make me vote how I want. I'm going to vote on all the information. Go, 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 go back to procedures. Go That's back. part of the procedures. Okay. Do I need permission from this board as a procedure to search and look for all information that I am satisfied that this thing is done proper? Okay. Now, I will try to answer that question. All right. If it's pertinent to the zoning bylaw, and depending on what you're looking for, you know, if it's a simple piece of paper or a couple of simple research, okay. the town office will probably give it to you. If it's how the plan got to us, that has nothing to do with zoning. In other words, whatever the town meeting voted, has nothing to do with the zoning bylaw. Then I'm sorry, you go look for a vote somewhere else. Okay, I'm simply telling you the facts. Well, the, planning you board the, facts is, the planning board is tasked <coughs> with reviewing plans to comply with I the did not Can I finish? Show you. The, ta the planning board is tasked with reviewing plans for compliance with the zoning bylaw. How the plans got to us, whether or not any other thing, like I use WS development, how they got to these plans today, we don't care. It has nothing to do with zoning. How the senior center, I'm going to use them as the other example, got the plan to the, to the planning board for site plan approval is irrelevant to reviewing the zoning bylaw. It may be good information for the town people to know. However, to review the zoning bylaw, we look at the plan in front of us. How does this plan comply with the zoning bylaw? How do you and know what they propose is fruitful? It doesn't matter. It matters to me. That's maybe, but as far as the zoning bylaw goes, this is the plan, this is the parcel of land. Yeah. Does it comply yeah. with zoning? Yeah. What's wrong with it? What's good about it? What, what, how does it, does it or does it not comply with the zoning bylaw. That is the planning board's task. Like I said, how it got to us may be good information for the townspeople to know, or the citizens, or the electorate, or whatever you want to call them, but as far as zoning, it's irrelevant. That's a fact. Unfortunately, you, I, I agree, you don't like that. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not buying that, and to me it's totally unacceptable. Because okay. at the town meeting was never explained what the hell we're getting for what we're spending. That, 
didn't happen. I'm not saying yes or no. But all I'm saying is that is irrelevant to the zoning bylaws. This is not a private enterprise thing. It's for the future of our town. That's who we represent. Do we have any obligations that don't necessarily apply to the private sector when the public sector comes before us to put something together? Do we have any other obligations under the zoning bylaw or as public officials to look at things other than the zoning bylaw? No. The, the good example, a good, I'll give you a good example of that. When a Walmart expansion, when Walmart wanted to put a super center in uh, years ago, and we had multiple massive meetings in a cafeteria, and there was all kinds of stuff being brought up how Walmart is anti-union. Walmart doesn't treat the people right. On and on about the people and the employees. That, and, and that may be 100% true. It might be 100% false or something in the middle. That's However, true. regarding zoning, it's irrelevant. That's, well, recall when Platte College Inc. came in for us, a semi-public entity, UMass was involved. And uh, we were told that the Zobra Amendment applied and and we do it all they wanted to, and we said no. Well, and so we took we it. That was nowhere in the bylaw, but we said no. We and said no on very narrow grounds yeah, right, that right. they had not demonstrated yeah. that they fell under the Dover yeah. Amendment. Yeah. 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 And, but the point is, none of that was in the bylaw. We just but the, but decided but, that something else. Well, the, 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 the state law supersedes yeah, the bylaw. Yeah, yeah. The Dover Amendment is is indirectly to the state's only bylaw. And granted, we said no, they took off. They put it in Hatfield after a while. And the main reason they put it in Hatfield well, was they put it in Hatfield. What an ugly, ugly. Good. And, and it's half the size of what they're going to put in Hatfield. Yeah. So, so, however, but that, they, I mean, they took off because they couldn't wait the time frame of the appeal sure. and stuff. Sure. Enough said. Okay. Um, what would have happened if we went to court? Speculation, we have no idea. So to Jim's point, we see this a lot in public hearings when people come in, when we have an issue that's big enough to generate a crowd, and uh, people come in and they talk about things that would be a great argument for town meeting floor, but are irrelevant to the task before us. I understand that. You know, we may agree or disagree with the yeah. stuff you want to do. Yeah. And like I said, it may be great information for the townspeople, or for the citizens, or whoever, but as far as zoning, yeah. it really... The only, the only way to talk about what he wants to talk about is bring it back to town meeting. But if yeah. they, listen, if they don't have their five, four votes, and Mr. Dwyer can't make anybody else vote, and I believe Mr. Skronik is in conflict, so that eliminates one vote. We, 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 we will, before we put the cart in front of the horse, the vote not is, right. is not to be discussed of who can vote or who can't Listen. vote right now. No, John, do not discuss how we're going to vote. It's the State vote. Ethics Commission. That's fine for when they finally I'm talk. talking about procedures, and the procedure is I went to talk to the Ethics Commission to say, who could be in conflict, and, and I'm talking about myself. That's they laid right. out the gun. Did I give you a copy of that? Yes. Right. I filed one with the town clerk. All right? I'm not a member because it involves the building sitting on top of where they, the existing legion used for parking. So what it said in there, if I'm a member of the American Legion, if I'm a member and a friend of the American Legion, I can't participate in the matter. Okay. And I'm neat neither. As long as I act in a, as a planning board member, and I gotta say that, in the best interest of the town of Happy. And that's what I intend to do with all the facts before I vote. I'm sick and tired of the stuff with the drainage. Everybody's kicking the can or sweeping it under the table. I'm not sweeping nothing under the table. I'm looking at everything on its merits, what it causes, the repercussion of it, and what, for our next generation, what is going to happen to them. 
And if you guys don't want to know about it, don't. That's all I'm going to say to you guys. Happy Hallelujah. Are we all done now? Almost. Oh. We got a bill to approve for for legal notice for Steve Lewis of 178.26. Motion to move it. Motion and approve. Motion. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Thank you, and thank you, John. Well, you are. <laughs> 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 